It's uh, day five here at the Toronto International Film Festival. It's Robert Mitchell, and uh, sitting beside me is the director of Bitch Slap, Rick Jacobson. And I just wanted to welcome you to Toronto. Hey. And, uh... <laughs> What was uh, the genesis of how you wanted to become a filmmaker? Uh, I don't know what the genesis was. It was just, uh, I'm one of those um, kids that grew up making films. I, I started making films when I was in fifth grade, and I started in animation. And I think it was kind of more um, stemming from the fascination of monster movies. I love monster movies, Godzilla movies. And so I started um, just doing stop motion animation with clay and little action figures and stuff. And then... Um, that just kind of spawned into then getting my friends and doing zombie movies and then kind of doing more serious uh, uh, films, short films. Uh, and, and it just kind of kept growing, you know. Of course, I, I, I'm also part of the Star Wars generation. So, um, you know, kind of Jaws was, was the first kind of film that I remember kind of going, oh, fuck, that's really cool. And then Star Wars, of course, was the big, the big kind of uh, hammer that really made me go, I gotta, I gotta make films. Um, and then as I kept kind of getting older, I kind of became a fan of works like Hitchcock and and Sergio Leone and stuff. And it just kind of, um, it was always what I, all I ever wanted to do. Um, and I'm just kind of one of the lucky ones that uh, kind of fluked my way into it, and now I'm able to kind of make a li living out of it. So. So as you say, you flew your way into it. Did, does that mean, uh, did you go to film school or did you take a different route? No, I, I went to film school. Um, I went to CalArts. But my second year at CalArts, um, I met a, a, a guy who was working in the film industry. And he um, he got me working on a just a little low-budget feature doing Griff Electric. And I did worked on it for free, but um, it was it was a fantastic. It was a great, great learning experience. And I actually kind of found myself learning more while on the set because after I did that one, then I did another one, and I did another one. I was actually ending up working on films more than I was going to school and learning a hell of a lot more. Um, so after kind of like my second year at CalArts, I essentially just kind of bailed out and, uh, and then just started working in the film business. And then from there, um, it was just all about getting those contacts and making those contacts. And all the time while doing that, you know, earning a little bit of paycheck, making contacts, but also I, I kept making my own short films on the side. And uh, and then so eventually I made a, a little 10-minute uh, kung fu spoof movie that I shot in a day and cut in a weekend and kind of thought it was funny and went down and showed it to the crew I was working with at the time. And that was at the time, it was, it was a Roger Corman production and um, showed it to the crew. They loved it. Um, loved it so much that some of the producers kind of heard about it. They said, hey, I heard you did this thing. Love to see it. They saw it. That eventually kind of led to, to Roger Corman, who then gave me a job um, directing second unit. And then off of directing second unit, I got my own feature. So it was that was what I mean by kind of fluking my way in. It was just kind of stars and planets kind of aligned, and then everything worked out for me. Yeah, because that's what we were talking last night is Roger Corman. You credited him with giving you a start in the business. Is that how you met him then? Uh, well, I mean, I, I, at the time, I had I had already done, I don't know, maybe like 10 features for him, but as a crew member. And I had met him casually, but not one-on-one -on -one as a director. Um, and it was really kind of a combination of Roger Corman and, and Don Wilson, who was an actor, uh, a, a big martial arts actor, especially at that time. It was his film that I was crewing on. And Don, because it was a martial arts film, Don actually s was the first one to really kind of see it and go, wow, this guy's great. Because... After seeing that, Don wrote me into his contract for a film he had coming up following, uh, I think it was called Ring of Fire, um, to direct all of his action scenes. So that was kind of my first thing. And then I you know, kind of at the same time, the Roger thing was going on. So, um, yeah, that was, that was my first time that I got to actually kind of go into Roger and have, and have the famous Roger Corman speech, which, which um, every first-time director will – He'll sit down and, and give give his 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 words of wisdom to and uh, he he has some some pretty uh, some good little nuggets of of uh, wisdom. Well, yeah, you were telling me that one last night. If you want to uh, tell that one again about the sound, I'll tell that one. He uh, Roger said, uh, you know, again, whole just little little uh, tricks of how to keep the production moving. And one of the ones he says is. Um, when you sh when you're shooting a take or when you shoot a take, 
do not bother to ask the sound man if the sound is okay. Just call cut and move on. And I kind of looked at him kind of questioningly, and he says, and I was like, you know, why, Roger? He says, because if you ask the sound man after every take if the sound was okay, and you shoot 30, 40 setups a day, you're essentially going to lose about an hour on the day just asking the sound man if it's okay. If the sound's not okay, he'll let you know. And you kind of just sit there and you go, makes sense. And I've never done it. I've never done it. That's, that's, that, that's probably one of the, the main ones from Roger that uh, – has always kind of just <laughs> stuck with me. Never asked the sound guy. So, uh, so you've done that, and then uh, eventually you uh, mount uh, bitch slap. How did that uh, come together? You co-wrote it. Uh, co-wrote it. Uh, co-produced it with a buddy of mine, Eric Grunderman, who we met on Zine and Hercules about twelve years ago. Um, bitch slap was um, bitch slap was just a uh, is a, is a film founded on just the desire to do my own thing. At the time, I'd had a lot of films just kind of uh, I in the wrong producer's hands and films that were driven into the ground, and it was kind of just out of that kind of frustration that I was like, oh, fuck, I just got to do my own thing. And um, just kind of sat and drew up this little kind of checklist of things, you know, needed a film that was easy to sell. Easy to sell is beautiful women, action, um, blood, uh, fast cars, lots of visual eye candy. So it was kind of just coming up with an idea to fill in all those those checks. And um, I was kind of in the middle of working on that, kind of doing the treatment and stuff. And uh, then I had dinner with Eric one night, and just by chance he had kind of hit the same kind of frustration level with the industry. And he was like, fuck, I just need to do my own thing. And I pitched him what I was doing with uh, the slap, and he really liked the idea. And from that point on, we collaborated on it together. And and here we are, sitting here in Toronto. Yeah, so when you got that call, uh, how amazing was that? What's that? Uh, when you got the uh, notice that you were accepted at the film festival, the Toronto International Film Festival, when you're coming to Midnight Madness. Oh, it's, it's, it's uh, fantastic. We met Colin in Cannes, and uh, he saw Bitch Lap there. And uh, we knew he really kind of liked it. And we certainly kind of were, were hoping that we would, we would uh, be, uh, be accepted here. But uh, I was just, it's, a, it's, it's incredibly exciting. And more than anything else, it's exciting for us because this Toronto really is going to be the first time that, that uh, Bitch Lab is going to be seen by the people and the viewers that it was truly intended for. Cannes was great, but it was still very industry-based. And, um, and the crowd at Midnight Madness is, is just its wheelhouse, you know, it's its wheelhouse crowd. So uh, I'm just excited to sit in the audience and, and watch it with them and, and hopefully, if we've done everything right, get the reactions that uh, we're looking for. Uh, going on uh, talking about bitch stuff a little bit more, um, first of all, I have to uh, congratulate you. You've put together a an insanely great looking cast of women. And uh, I was wondering about the dynamics of assembling all these women and uh, I think you uh, were telling me you really lucked out. There was not a lot of egos on set. Everybody came on board, and everybody was there for the project. Yeah, it really was. You know, anytime, anytime you cast three, three female leads. Well, you know, any leads, but uh, especially kind of three female leads, and it's all about who's you know making them all look gorgeous and beautiful. Uh, it can be a bit of a tinderbox because you know, ev you know, well, I'm the star. No, I'm the star. I'm the star. And I've had that in the past before with projects. So we always kind of knew going into this, it was going to be like, well, the potential's there, but hopefully it won't happen. And, you know, it, it's just simply by fluke that we ended up with three girls who all get along wonderfully, they all work together wonderfully, and they all play off each other wonderfully. And that's just, that's just, uh, that's just luck of the draw. And, and you, you can't plan for that. You just hope for it. Just try and kind of create... Um, characters and an atmosphere that that is supporting of them and um it worked it worked we got very lucky um just to backpedal a little bit i was uh, looking at your uh resume and you did a lot of uh television yep. particularly baywatch and xena and that come to mind i was wondering uh directing all those episodes of television did that uh how did that translate into directing a feature did you uh well i actually started in features i went i started in features then I got kind of just derailed, if you will, into television. Um, 
uh, and I ended up just doing television. Television is great um, because it's it's kind of in and out, you know. For the most part, an, an episode is maybe a month of work. You go in, you prep for a couple weeks, you shoot for a couple weeks, you get maybe four or five, depending on the show, days of editing, and you're done. Good paycheck, residuals, so that's great. But television, especially for a director, at least for me, uh, it, it's a bore. Um, I'm just a traffic cop because unless you unless you shoot a pilot of a show or unless you kind of get on some show like say Xena, Xena and Hercules and Cleopatra were really good at, at, at letting directors kind of do their thing. But unless you get a, a kind of a fluke show like that, the show's established, the look of the show's established, the characters are established. So, you know, it's kind of hard to kind of go in there. I mean, there's many times I'll be like, you know, oh, let's, you know, let's do this. And the DP will be like, ah, oh, we don't really like to shoot it that way on this show. And you're like, oh, okay, well, what do you guys do? And you just end up sitting behind the monitors. So it, it's, it's great in that respect, um, the in and out. But features creatively are, are far superior and, and rewarding for me. Um, so... They certainly didn't kind of prepare me or anything for shooting shooting features. If anything, I was always trying to shoot television-like features more than anything else. But now, you know, now you look at you learn things on every single film you do, and and you know, television and even shooting with Roger. Well, Roger Corbin was was probably the best. If you can do if you can tell a movie make a movie at Roger Corman Studios and you can do it anywhere because it's you know 12 day shoots no budgets and you're just you're just sprinting from start to end so and television can can certainly be like that um, so you know I guess that's the sort of stuff that I would I, I use a bit in in features is obviously when that sun's setting and you got to scramble you can pick you know picking up the pace or compromising or or reblocking things on the fly mm, is is Pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Uh, there's another thing I see you are uh, up. Uh, you have an upcoming project that I believe is completed. Spartacus. Spartacus, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's uh, it's a, it's a new new series for Stars, which is a um, premium cable channel in the states, and I don't know if it's in Canada or not. But um, it's gonna be uh, right after the new year. Um, uh, it's kind of um. It's kind of a combination of 300 meets Gladiator, but kind of, you know, we, we certainly tip our hat to those things because it's hard not to because they're both such great films. Um, but at the same time, um, we've kind of created our own thing, hopefully. And and so certainly fans of those movies should love Spartacus. It's got the sex, it's got the violence, great characters, great story. It certainly follows the legend of the Spartacus story, but at the same time, you know, take some film uh, and te television liberties, but uh, Sam Raimi, Rob Tappert, our, our executive producers on it again, shooting down in New Zealand, amazing cast. Uh, I even got to uh, uh, work with Aaron Cummings again, who is Hell in Bitch Lap, and she plays Sura in in Spartacus: Blood and Sand. So that was that was good fun to work with her on it. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be a real exciting show, and I, I'm uh, I know it went over really well at this year's Comic Con, and. Um, I think I think people really kind of dig it because there's nothing really like it on television now. Um, you know, back a few years ago there was the Xenas and the Herks, and I know there was a couple other kind of sword and sandal type stuff. But um, I think the kind of visual style of this and um, and just the characters and the actors, I think people really kind of enjoy it. Uh, touching on that sword and sandals thing, and uh, obviously you love martial arts and action. Uh, could I just ask uh, who are some of your influences? Um, in particular, maybe a bitch slap or just uh, what kind of got you started? What with um, with filmmaking in general? Mm -hmm. Like I said, I dude, I'm 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 really kind of um, I'm the Star Wars generation. So, you know, my career was certainly inspired by and and kind of defined by the Steven Spielbergs and the George Lucas and and the Ridley Scotts and the James Cameron. And I was a huge John Carpenter fan. Still, I'm a huge John Carpenter fan. Um, and then, like I said, as I kind of learn more about film, uh, I've been heavily influenced by Alfred Hitchcock and Sergio Leone. And um, so, I mean, those are the guys, contemporary filmmakers, you know, uh, there's a lot of amazing, amazing um, directors out there now. But uh, sadly, I don't get a lot of time to see films anymore. Um, 
which is just horrible. As in fact, I just flying over here, I, I finally saw like Star Trek for the first time, that, and it was fantastic. Yeah, it's it's fan well done, but unfortunately, I had to see it on a screen about yeah. this big and turbulence and you know shitty sound. <laughs> so I, I'm looking forward to seeing it on a better thing. But um, yeah, so I mean, those it's those. I'm a bit old school in the sense of um, filmmaking, and and I kind of. When uh, when approaching Bitchlap, it was well. There's a number of reasons, but Bitchlap is shot pretty traditionally. There's n it's not it's kind of just old school filmmaking. Uh, we shot out in the desert, so again, I was kind of being inspired by the spaghetti westerns and shot two, three, five, and kind of composed things certain ways. But um, uh, I'm just I'm not I'm not really a fan of just the the camera randomly roving around for no reason. I find it more distracting than anything else. But and I also, you know, I'm not I'm not a big fan on the look at what I can do with the camera sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And more than anything else is we didn't have the budget or the time on this film to be doing that stuff. I didn't have a you know hothead train and I fucking we just had a kind of, you know it was it was it was basically just guerrilla filmmaking. You know, I shot the thing with the with the red camera on my shoulder. But after all that uh, work in television I'm sure it was rather liberating. And creative. It's it's exactly the reason why Eric and I did this. It was, look, we've had a lot of fantastic experiences in, in both film and television, and um, uh, uh, some projects where you know it's it's those dream projects where everybody gets along and the and the final outcome is great. But then of course there's just a lot of frustration. There's a lot of red tape, and there's a lot of people um, that. Uh, are in the in power positions that shouldn't be in power positions. So there's just a lot of frustrations, and and bitch slap was really kind of the um, the final thing of of Eric and I looking at each other, going, let's just do our own thing, and make the film that we want to make, and not have to answer to anybody else. And we either sink or swim, um, and it all kind of falls on falls on us. So. Yeah, no, it, it's a uh, bitch slap has been has certainly been one of the the most rewarding um, film making experiences that I've had uh, on every level. <laughs>